Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to listen to today's topic, CDP Journey. My name is uh, Gopal Raghavan, and I'm with the Partner Programs team at Cloudera. Uh, I'm joined by Brad Bukacek, who is a Strategic Solutions Engineering Leader at Cloudera. Together, we will share um, some guidance on how to migrate your customers to CDP. So as you probably know, CDP is our next generation platform uh, that has best of breed capabilities from both legacy Cloudera and Hortonworks distributions. Um, this presentation will cover how a journey from your current data platform, whether it's a Cloudera CDH or Hortonworks uh, HTP uh, to CDP will look like. So we've been uh, talking to our customers pretty extensively and uh, we wanna share this with you too, so you can guide your customers um, to move to CDP um, using this journey. So first of all, let's figure out, let's uh, go through why your customer should be on CDP in the first place. What are the advantages for your customer in moving to this platform? So to get a perspective, let's look at how things have evolved, right? In 2008, uh, all our focus was on trying to scale um, one job to thousands of servers. So we used to use technologies that would focus on, um, you know, basically co-locating data with compute for efficiencies and really trying to make use of commodity hardware to do that. Now, fast forward to 2020, the new challenge is around scaling a platform to thousands of users, right? So if you start to look at some of the advances that we've made in network performance um, optimizations, uh, what we've done is we've taken advantage of that and we've also used the ability to decouple storage and compute and basically use that as a paradigm to uh, scale a platform to thousands of users, right? So let's look at the five pillars within a data life cycle across an enterprise. The first is collecting, uh, essentially where uh, enterprises ingest data from a variety of sources, um, streaming or otherwise, to address a wide variety of mission critical use cases, right? So this would mean you collect data from the edge, um, basically from sources like files, databases, or even um, streaming sources like clickstream events and whatnot. And then the second step or the second pillar, what we call as curate, uh, involves basically data augmentation. So the data that you collect in the collect phase um, is uh, basically uh, enriched uh, for providing contextual information uh, for precise decision making. Then the third step in the process of a data life cycle is to take this the data that you've enriched and augmented, and then you're using dashboarding technologies like Click or Dashboard, I mean, Click or Tableau, or even things, uh, or even technologies like Impala and Hi to basically surface insights. So which means that in this report phase, you're trying to understand what the current state of the business is. And then what we're doing in the serve phase is taking a subset of this information and you're building mission critical application requiring low latency, real time operations. Finally, what we're doing is we are trying to use machine learning and AI in this new world and age to basically not only predict the next set of events, but also be very prescriptive in trying to guide your business to more profitability. In other words, what you're doing with the predict phase is taking the, actually building an intelligent business, right? So each of these pillars uh, have unique requirements for analytics. Now, based on where these functions take place, these can really proliferate data silos, right? So what happens is when you start to have data silos, then it'll start to basically increase the um, enterprise's cost of doing a business. That is why, if you look at this, a common security, governance, lineage, and management uh, layers required for you to manage all these different silos of information. And this is what we call as the Cloudera SDX. That, that is a technology that enables you to basically manage these different, uh, different uh, pillars um, across different infrastructures. Now, this brings us to the concept of what we call as a hybrid cloud. So what's a hybrid cloud? So as we've seen in the previous slide, the fragmented landscape is a, is a reality. It is a fact of life. So really a hybrid cloud is something, an environment that will enable you to manage this fragmented landscape. It will also enable you to move your workloads between different deployments. So today 
You may be deploying a certain workload on AWS. Tomorrow you want to do it on Azure, or day after tomorrow in GCP, or even take it to on-prem. Really allowing workloads to be migratable and move between deployments is a big, big uh, need for the enterprises these days. So you also have to be very flexible. Hybrid cloud architectures are very flexible in providing more data deployment options uh, so that the companies are able to use the best hardware for their use cases and really optimize their budgets. So let's look at uh, CDP. So CDP, our next generation data platform, offers all of the things that a hybrid cloud architecture requires. So we have different flavors for different uh, you know, types of infrastructures. So as you see here, we have a data center and private cloud, which is coming very shortly. Uh, we have the concept of what we call as a hybrid cloud, which means that you can use on-prem with a multitude of uh, you know, uh, cloud options, and then really multi-cloud options. So really using things like GCP, AWS, and Azure very effectively to lower your cost of compute. And it's all tied together in one single pane of glass. So this is the control plane, which enables you to do that. And then it has a single open uh, metadata along with the security policies and governance policies that let you interpret the data uh, consistently across all these different infrastructures, right? So basically, this is the architecture uh, that of Cloudera that enables you to move to the next generation hybrid cloud paradigm. And this also helps you prevent the vendor lock-in and use every resource available to you to manage data effectively. So let's look at it from a target architecture perspective. So here, you have all these different types of uh, implementations. This could span AWS, Azure, GCP. Uh, it could also be a private cloud deployment uh, for organizations that are not able to go to public cloud, but also want a public cloud-like experience. You have the private cloud. You have the data center, which is your on-prem, a great way to basically create a foundation and then use the other uh, technologies as a, as a way to um, reduce your cost of ownership. And then this is the control plane that helps you tie all of these different infrastructures together so you're able to get a 360 degree view of all these assets. And then the SDX is the security and metadata layer that helps you basically tie all of these infrastructures together in a one single uh, consistent uh, way of interpreting and also securing the data and then being very compliant with all the different regulatory uh, rules that are uh, coming up lately. So we'll see that customers don't really want to be tied to one infrastructure. They want the ability to move between different infrastructures. And then what we do from a cloud perspective is we support them on this complete journey, right? So that said, CDP has quite a bit of uh, features and benefits for an organization. This means that enterprises or customers are really looking to move to CDP to take advantage of the hybrid cloud paradigm. So let's, that said, there is a journey to move to CDP. So if you look at our current uh, customers, um, so you have, uh, because uh, in, in January of 2019, two companies merged together, Hortonworks and Cloudera. So as a result, over 80% of our customers are on different versions of either Cloudera or Hortonworks. So 80% of our customer base is on HTTP2 and CDH5. And you'll see that the end of life support, end of support life is in December 2020. So you see this cloud out of five, uh, 516, 515, 514, they are all EOA saying in December 2020. Likewise, our Hortonworks distribution, which is 226, which is where 80% of customers are, uh, is also EOA saying uh, December 2020. So it's very imperative that we help our customers really uh, move to CDP as part of the uh, as part of their next uh, logical migration path. So what you'll see in the next few sections are some guidances, some paths that you can take to help your customers move to CDP. I'll now hand it to Brad, who will provide some guidance on this uh, on, on the different paths to CDP. Brad, thank you, Gopal. Yep, you got it. Hello, uh, my name is Brad Bukacek. Uh, I am a part of the solution engineering organization at Cloudera, and I will walk you through uh, the different paths that customers can take on getting to this next generation platform that we call CDP. 
when we look at the three paths to getting to CDP, they really break down in three clear and con concise uh, ways that customers can get to adopt CDP. If you look over here onto the left, uh, we have a path that allow customers to move from their existing data platforms, whether that's CDH or HDP, and move and migrate that to public cloud. What that means is they can actually copy their data and metadata to the public cloud and then ex uh, migrate those existing workloads as well. Uh, as Gopal mentioned, that would be included uh, in cloud deployments on AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google GCP. Other mechanisms for customers that want to stay on-prem in their own data center and getting to CDP would be migrating or upgrading to CDP data center. To do uh, one way to eliminate complexity of deployments uh, and complexity of upgrades is to do a migration to CDP. That means standing up a net new CDP environment uh, and migrating both the data and metadata to that new cluster and then moving those existing workloads. This really provides a way for customers to uh, eliminate that complexity of doing an in-place upgrade uh, using the same hardware. In turn, there are customers that are unable to do a migration to public cloud or migration to CDP data center uh, in the data center. That means they will be able to do an in-place upgrade from CDH or HDP to CDP data center. Uh, this would be uh, upgrading from those classic form factors using the same hardware infrastructure they have in place today. The one thing to note uh, in addition to this slide is that if you go from left to right from going to public cloud to do an in-place upgrade to CDP DC, you also, uh, it goes from least complex to more complex. And customers are looking to uh, find the, the less, least complex way of getting to this new evolution platform. And these are ways that customers can take, get there. In addition, uh, CDP data center is also the foundation of CDP private cloud, where you get the cloud experience of our CDP experiences in the data center. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit further in the coming slides. Now I'm gonna walk you through some of the details on how a customer can migrate uh, or upgrade to these, this new evolution platform, CDP. So the first one is migrating existing clusters to CDP public cloud. That means uh, those use cases that are targeted are usually for customers that are looking to optimize uh, their costs and move workloads into the public cloud. So that means we can target large clusters that want to run in the cloud and that is an opportunity for them to reshape and optimize their workloads. In addition, small clusters that are running on-prem anywhere between 30 to 50 nodes can be lifted and reshaped into CDP public cloud as well. This is also a great opportunity for customers that are running dev QA test clusters or even DR clusters to start optimizing their data lake architecture in the cloud. So how is this actually being done? In your legacy platform, CDH and HDP, you're able to copy the metadata into our SDX layer, the shared data experience layer. That means all metadata from security policies to governance policies will get moved into the SDX layer as part of an always on service. The actual data it itself sitting in the HDFS on-prem today in CDH or HDP will get migrated and moved into uh, a data lake object store. You can think of that as an S3, uh, an ABFS uh, in Azure or GCS in Google. From the existing workload perspective, the compute can then be moved into optimized experiences uh, in CDP public cloud. That can come in form factors of a data hub cluster, which is very similar to multi-tenant clusters that are on-prem, and or experiences that are persona-based for uh, self-service use cases. You can think of those as data warehouse use cases, data engineering, or AI or machine learning uh, via the Cloudera machine learning experience. The second is how do you build a connected data lake with CDP public cloud? As I showed in the previous slide, we showed you ways that you can move multi-tenant use cases to data hub experiences and or persona-based experiences that are running in cloud on optimized VMs or Kubernetes. And we already have that metadata and replication. 
uh, layer as part of the uh, shared data experience as well. And of course, the data is already sitting in the data lake. But there are also use cases uh, based on single tenants that are also running on AWS or in Azure. You can think of those use cases like HDI, uh, HD Insight from Microsoft or uh, EMR from AWS. That information uh, and that uh, data catalog is collected as part of those native services. As part of our CDP public uh, cloud platform, we're able to replicate uh, data and metadata from that da uh, cloud data catalog into the SDX layer. So you get a view, an enterprise view of your data, uh, even though those cloud native services are being used. There's value there to uh, understanding that data when those single tenant use cases are in use. The third is there are many customers that have many, uh, many clusters uh, that sprawl anywhere between the 50 to hundreds of clusters. Those clusters are typically been used uh, you know, for sandbox environments, small dev environments for specific uh, organizations within a, within a business. Um, this is an opportunity for those customers to consolidate those data silos, eliminate complexity of management of many clusters, um, and move it into a single platform uh, in CDP uh, and start using uh, CDP private cloud to gain cloud advantages on-prem in their data center. So how would they do that? Those small on-prem CDH or HDP clusters, we would do the same thing as I mentioned before. We'd migrate the storage layer into CDP data center, into the storage layer, which is just HDFS. Uh, the metadata layer will also go into the SDX layer um, with the metadata, the policies associated uh, in, in the SDX layer. And then you're able to migrate those small tenants to CDP private cloud, meaning I can uh, move those workloads as experiences running on Kubernetes containers uh, via OpenShift. That way they can gain uh, better isolation, uh, more, more precise guaranteed SLAs, um, and there's no more need to do resource management on a large multi-tenant cluster. The experiences align with those use cases on those persona-based uh, experiences uh, for data warehousing, CML, data engineering, AI, uh, and machine learning. So that is one opportunity for customers on how they can get to CDP private cloud. The other opportunity is to really start isolating those VIP tenants into CDP private cloud. These use cases are focused on customers that are large, running large multi-tenant clusters uh, where they have many tenants, many users um, that are running on their current platform today. Those tenants typically require strong SLAs, guaranteed SLAs, uh, and or version isolations, meaning they may want to move to a newer version of Hive uh, in, the, in the CDP private cloud. What you do with those large on-prem clusters is, again, you replicate and move data and metadata to the storage and SDX layer as part of CDP. And then you can move uh, tenants to that private cloud. And that's where they'll get that isolation uh, running again on Kubernetes containers. Uh, and now they have guaranteed uh, isolation and version, version isolation as well. These use cases, again, align very well with reporting BI data warehousing use cases, as well as AI and machine learning as well. The last one is upgrading to data, uh, upgrading to CDP data center and isolating those workloads again via private cloud. So those large on-prem CDH HDP customers will then do, be doing a migration to CDP data center where you can do an upgrade via a migration, uh, meaning deploying new hardware to migrate uh, the data and metadata over, or uh, doing an in-place upgrade if no new hardware refresh needs to be done. So you get to CDP data center, and as I mentioned before, this is the foundation uh, for the CDP private cloud that will be out later this year from Cloudera. Again, you can keep uh, the SDX layer where all your common security and governance features will be, your storage layer via HDFS. The additional part is I can leave compute and resources uh, 
in that uh, cluster uh, for those data engineering type workloads uh, or workloads that don't need to be migrated to private cloud. For those important tenants that need guaranteed isolation um, and or uh, scalable compute, uh, whether that's auto scaling uh, or auto healing, those can be moved to CDP private cloud via the experiences. Again, to reiterate, the experiences are persona based. That could either be Cloudera Data Warehouse, Cloudera Machine Learning, Cloudera Data Engineering, or, or Dataflow. And those are the use cases that will be targeted towards private cloud. So they have a, a way to have a cloud experience on-prem. So we talked about how there are different paths of getting to CDP data center based on where customers are at uh, on CDH or HDP and how they can go and use CDP private cloud to have a cloud experience on-prem. But how do, you, how, how do you prepare for your customer's journey? There's lots of changes that have been made uh, within CDP data center, uh, many great innovative changes that resulted from the merger of Cloudera and Hortonworks. But it's important to understand how do you prepare your, for your customer's journey. So a couple things to note uh, related to some of the components that are in CDP data center uh, and recommendations that we have made uh, to customers uh, for how to move uh, existing uh, components to new components. So these are components here on the left um, that have been removed and deprecated from CDP data center. Flume, Storm, ScoopTube, Pig, and Crunch have all been removed um, from CDP data center. Therefore, uh, customers will need to migrate uh, to uh, different tools that will provide better uh, and more uh, less complex uh, capabilities for them. So for instance, Apache Flume is no longer in CDP data center. Our recommendation and approach that customers should take is to use Cloudera Flow Manager, which is based and powered by Apache NiFi. Another thing uh, is Apache Storm for legacy Hortonworks uh, customers, those are being ported over to uh, Cloudera Stream Analytics, uh, powered by Apache Flink, uh, a new technology that Cloudera is now supporting, and, then, and so on. In addition, there were some decisions that needed to make about overlapping technologies between the two platforms, uh, CDH and HDP. So you can see here on the left, the Yarn Fair, Fair, Fair Scheduler uh, will be migrated and moved into, the CD, uh, into CDP and using the capacity scheduler. This will all be uh, available for customers to configure via a Cloudera Manager UI. Sentry and Navigator as part of CDH will be migrated over to Ranger and Atlas. And then lastly, uh, for customers leveraging uh, the Hortonworks data platform, uh, Ambari will uh, not, no longer be around and Cloudera Manager will be there uh, for provisioning uh, CDP data center clusters. The one thing I wanted to note over here is as part of the migration effort or the upgrade effort to CDP data center, we have built uh, tooling that will get customers from uh, the fair scheduler to capacity scheduler, Century Navigator to Ranger and Atlas, and from Ambari to Cloudera Manager. This is an opportunity uh, for customers to reevaluate how they do resource manager because um, the capacity scheduler is in place, which has more capabilities, better capabilities than what the fair scheduler had and advantages that uh, customers can do from a resource management perspective. At the same time, with the introdu introduction of Ranger and Atlas into the platform, there's opportunities to look at uh, the security models and authorization models that are built uh, within uh, a, the multi-tenant cluster in, or in CDP data center. Ranger and Atlas brings in new capabilities around uh, ABAC controls, attri attribute-based access controls, um, as well as fine-grain uh, row-level filtering, uh, column-level masking, uh, as well as uh, uh, encryption uh, at rest as well. So this is an opportunity uh, for customers as they move to this new evolution platform to look at both resource management via the capacity scheduler and their security and governance uh, framework and architecture. In addition, um, in preparation for moving to CDP, there are also component level changes that are being made uh, as well. So you can see here, Spark, uh, Spark 1.6 was supported in HDP and CDH. All those jobs will need to be moved to Spark.2, which has more and better capabilities. Uh, you can see that JDK 1.8, 
needs to be installed on all nodes. Uh, there will also be new OS requirements that need to be handled as well, meaning that uh, customers will need to be on Red Hat 7.6 or above uh, for supportability for CDP data center. We specifically talk about the versions that are, being able, uh, that are able to do in-place upgrades to CDP data center. We do require minimum versions uh, on HDP and CDH. So what that means for HDP customers is they need to be on uh, HDP 265 to do an in-place upgrade uh, to CDP data center 7.1. For CDH customers, they have to have a minimum uh, between the versions of 5.16 and 5.13 uh, to go an in-place upgrade to CDP data center. Again, as we talked on the previous slide, Pig, Crunch, Scoop, Flume, uh, need to be migrated and replaced because those are no longer supported within CDP. Um, and you need to assess any database upgrades that may be required for the backend services, like the Hive Meta Store, uh, the Ranger database for where uh, policies are stored. In addition, customers need to look through third party uh, support and certification on CDP DC. Uh, and many of those customers are already doing that today. Uh, on data center and or, and or public cloud with us. With that, I'm gonna pass it over to Gopal to wrap us up. All right, thank you, Brad. <clears throat> so let's look at uh, some calls to action, right? So as you've seen here, there is quite a bit of, uh, you know, intrigue about CDP, a uh, lot of interest in our customer base to move to CDP. Uh, but there are also a lot of things to consider uh, when you start to plan your journey uh, to CDP, right? So as the first step, uh, one of the asks is to basically work with your Cloud Array AE and SCs to deliver a workshop. So this is a workshop that we are already conducting for a lot of our customers, but this is a great opportunity for you to collaborate with our Cloud Array AE and SCs to deliver this workshop. The workshop is typically going to be two hours long in duration if we deliver this virtually, uh, or four hours if we deliver it on site. And the four hour workshop on site will include a whiteboarding session. But unfortunately, due to the, um, due to the travel restrictions because of the virus issues, um, we'll be doing most of the work remotely. So um, the workshop will be two hours long. So if you can plan for that, that'll be great. The output of the workshop will basically be a comprehensive plan to help you, I mean, it'll be a plan that contains what are the different things you need to do to help your customers um, evaluate the best options for their CDP journey. And also what are the different steps to take the customer and migrate, it, migrate them or even upgrade them to CDP, right? And this is a plan that, that will, be, uh, will be pretty comprehensive and uh, it'll be a lot of, uh, the, the outcome will be uh, the customer being on CDP. Now that said, we'll open up for questions, question and answers. Debbie? Yes, um, so we have about three questions. Um, as a reminder to the audience, if you have any questions, please write them in the Q&A panel. Um, so we have two questions that are basically the same. Will you be sharing the presentation? and the slides. Uh, yeah, I believe the recording will be shared, correct? Recording and the slides as well? Uh, sure. All right, perfect. Um, another question here. Some of our clients have small clusters, about 10 nodes on the cloud. What path is recommended for them? Yes, that's a great question. Um, for customers that have small clusters, 10 nodes, or even 50 nodes and below, uh, there's two different paths that they can take. That is a great opportunity for many customers to go leverage the public cloud if they can. Um, if they're able to run workloads in AWS, uh, Azure, or GCP, that's a great opportunity for them. In addition, um, they do have paths to migrate uh, or move to uh, CDP data center. Uh, my suggestion would then to do a, a migration uh, into CDP data center. Great. Another question. When we do the migration, whatever path we choose, 
how do I know if all the data and metadata have been migrated or not? If so, are there any tools to measure this? Yes, that's another great question. As part of uh, CDP, whether that's CDP data center on-prem, CDP private, or CDP public cloud, there's a component that's called replication manager that will allow you to connect into these classic clusters, either CDH or HDP, and will allow you to replicate not just the data that's stored in HDFS, but also the, the policies um, as well, right? That, those policies coming from uh, Ranger or those policies coming from Sentry. If it is connecting into a CDH classic cluster, uh, the Sentry policies will be migrated uh, and, and put into Apache Ranger uh, as part of the tooling uh, aspects of Replication Manager. Right. Is a new CDP dockerized and can I run on Kubernetes? Yes, it, CDP, the components break down and run in dockerized containers. So don't look at it as from a CDP as a whole, but the component level things. So things like Apache Hive, Apache Spark, those are actually running in containers via our CDP experiences that are running on Kubernetes. Um, so it's actually at the component level uh, and not the whole platform, uh, the Cloud Air Data platform. All right, um, we might have to answer this question later, but can you give or share some technical building blocks considering legacy application landscape to more modern CDP? Yeah, the answer to answer that question, um, one thing to the, the biggest part and uh, the biggest phase of getting to CDP and all the new innovation that's happening in CDP is really preparing and planning for the customer's journey. That means having an understanding of use cases, how uh, those use cases are running against the specific components, um, and what changes are being made within CDP data center. There are some uh, big uh, changes as it relates to Spark and Hive um, so that having an understanding of those changes and how they morph or change into CDP data center is very important to understand from an application standpoint. Yeah, I want to also interject is that if you are working with a customer right now that's looking at migrating to Cloud Air Data, data Platform, please register the opportunity in the partner portal and then we'll have an assigned account executive and sales engineer to help you through that process. Um, can we get a VM for the quick start? Yes, there, there is. Um, you're able to download CDP data center. It is already released today, uh, 7.0.3. That is available um, uh, on our website uh, and you're able to, to install that. Uh, a quick start uh, is being looked at internally by, by the teams and providing that to, to uh, the public. Yeah, and for partners, uh, we do offer a longer partner development subscription. Uh, the one um, Brad was alluding to, it's online, it's for 30 days trial, but you can go into the partner portal and request for a partner development subscription. So that will last for one year. And we do have automation cluster toolkits available if you are looking to spin up a cluster easily. All right, what, is, what are the subscription plans for on-premise migrations? What are they specifically referring to in this question? Um, do not know. Like, uh, license, it'd be licensing. Licensing, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that can uh, that we can take offline. I, I assume that um, so we have pricing available on cloudair.com under I think product tab. So you can look at the different pricing options there. But again, as I said, if you are working with a customer um, and they're looking at Cloudera data platform, please register the opportunity so that we can have a more formal sales planning conversation with you and your customer. All right, next question. Will clients using Clutter Express, i.e. the open source version of CDH, will they be able to request for a workshop? Uh, 
Yeah, so yes, as part of the, the part, partner portal or connect, work, please work with us and we will be able to uh, address a workshop uh, for them, for, for customers that are using the open source version of CDH. Okay, for new customers uh, for the next few months, can they start up directly with CDP or with one of the new, one of the releases and afterwards migrate? I think I got that <laughs> question. Yes, that, that's a great question. I answered in two different ways. Um, yes, CDP is out today. Our, our CDP public cloud offering is both available in uh, AWS uh, and Microsoft Azure. So for customers that are looking to take advantage uh, of moving or shifting workloads to the cloud, they'll be able to use those two services. In addition, we have released CDP data center uh, already, 7.0.3. That is available and customers uh, are working with that today as, as part of their migration journey. Um, as part of uh, migrating and actually moving into production, uh, we do have a pending CDP data center 7.1 release coming out shortly that customers will be then able to take to production. Thank you. All right, another one. What is uh, the migration path from HDP 3.1? Should we wait until end of 2021? Will there soon be a Hive 3.x, which is in HDP 3.1? Yes, another great question. Uh, first, first answer, yes, CDP data center does include Hive uh, 3.x. Um, in, in your question about migration from HDP 3.1, as I mentioned before, the upgrade plans that we've built for this, this coming release of CDP Data Center is for HTTP 265. Later this year, uh, towards the end of the year, we'll have uh, direct uh, in-place upgrades for customers running HTTP uh, 3.x. Um, if customers are wanting to migrate or move sooner, they are able to do uh, a migration to uh, CDP Data Center uh, when, uh, when they're ready and prepared to. All right. Um, once again, I want to remind everyone, if you have any questions, um, we are only taking questions through the Q&A panel. All right, we have two more questions here. What is the migration? Oh, sorry, we already answered that. Um, so we have one more question. Is the detailed documentation for CDP and the migration paths available on Cloudera website? Uh, they will be coming on our website here very shortly. Um, as we get closer to having our next uh, release of CDP Data Center, the de detailed documentation on how uh, customers can get to CDP Data Center uh, will be available on docs.cloudera.com. Yeah, and there already are some documentation on Cloudera Data Platform in general under our uh, docs.cloudera.com. All right, I don't see any questions. We can wait maybe another 30 seconds to see if anyone has any lingering questions. Yeah, some of the questions, uh, because there are a lot of questions, I also answered a lot of them via uh, chat. So. Oh, okay. Um, was there any um, questions that from your chat window that were interesting that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah. So really, I think one question from Mohit Mehta. Uh, he was asking if customers uh, want to go for multiple public clouds some part in, some in Azure, some in private, some in AWS, is that possible? And uh, I'm assuming that he's not talking about federation, um, but if that is the case, then yeah, that is the hybrid cloud paradigm uh, where we are leveraging different infrastructures for different workloads, right? Um, customers that have different views, uh, some have a requirement to run some workloads in AWS, some have requirements to run in a GCP, some have requirements to run in Azure, some can't leave on-prem, so yeah, that's, the, that's what the uh, Cloudera data platform enables you to do. And then the second question uh, from Sergio, uh, are there any plans for a cost management tool in CDP Public Cloud? So the one thing, uh, it, it, I think it's very uh, prudent to point out, 
is there's definitely a very comprehensive cost management um, tooling coming out. Um, but I'd also like to point out that uh, the workload manager um, facility that we have, it's a capability that we have in CDP, it enables you to basically diagnose the application performance. One of the biggest problems with uh, using multi-cloud or public cloud, even for that matter, is uh, overrun cloud spend, right? So one example is Lyft is currently spending 8.1 million per month on AWS, and they're on the hook to spend that till uh, 2021. So having a capability like Workload Manager helps you diagnose your workloads like for example, Spark or Impala, et cetera, and then help you build efficient applications. And this will not only help you write the best applications possible, but also help you control cloud spins. Um, so Mohit was asking, is it possible how security and other aspects are taken care? Of? And uh, the answer to that is via SDX layer. So SDX, um, it's not only metadata about data, uh, it's also, it also is going to contain uh, security policies, governance, and lineage, and uh, anything that you use to um, secure your data assets. So it's going to travel with the data um, to make sure that you're getting a consistent uh, control on all of your different infrastructure. So those are some of the questions. Um, I'm looking to see if there are other questions that uh, came up, but yeah. So some of these questions. Uh... Yeah, uh, we don't see any more questions here. Um, therefore, I think it's a good time to wrap up. Um, Gopal, Brad, do you have any final um, message you want to share with our audience? Yeah, so the one thing I'll say is um, the customers are really, uh, you know, from what we've seen in the, in the field, the customers are really looking forward to getting to CDP. And, uh, you know, it's a great uh, way for us to build a pipeline of opportunities jointly. Um, and Cloudera will help you basically develop a plan so you can execute on the plan. Um, the journey, uh, the workshop is a big, big step uh, to helping your customers in this process. So please involve your um, AE and SE, um, Cloudera AE and SE, and they will help you with basically planning the workshops and making sure that your customer, uh, customers are successful on their journey to CDP. Great. All right, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining. One, one, one question, one question has, uh, has oh. come up. So um, I would like to know how different CDP is compared to Snowflake. So I'll just add my thoughts to this and, uh, and Brad, feel free to chime in. So one of the things, uh, Snowflake, Snowflake is a, what we call as a point solution. So it uses SQL um, to basically run queries but you got to understand there are a few things that, that come with that, uh, that feature. You have to take data outside of, your, um, outside of your enterprise and move it into the VPC. So that's one. Number two is not every kind of use case is going to be addressable with, uh, with SQL because there's going to be streaming, uh, streaming type of data that's going to come in that people want to see some insights on. These days, everybody is moving into real-time uh, real analytics. And Snowflake is, uh, is only going to address um, static analytics. Number three, if you want to use Snowflake, you have to build your own security and governance policies. Okay. And number four, Snowflake will not let you do on-prem computing because the on-prem, there's a lot of companies uh, in the world right now that are going through severe regulatory and compliance issues because they cannot use their uh, data in a way uh, freely, right? So that prevents them from moving the data from the enterprise to cloud. So for that, uh, you, you can't really use Snowflake. So this is where cloud data starts to address a lot of that, uh, those problems. So it's a very comprehensive data platform where you don't need to have different types of tooling for different, uh, different problems. The platform has a very comprehensive set of capabilities to address every type of uh, data, data analytics whether it is streaming, whether it is data at rest, whether you want to run through like a publish and subscribe through Kafka, um, 
you know, all of that, all of those capabilities are right within the data, uh, data platform. And secondly, you don't have to move data out of your own VPC or even your own um, e enterprise to take advantage of uh, you know, insights. So that is where I think the comparison um, you know, is. Brad, do you want anything to add? Yeah, the last thing I would just add on to that is uh, the sh shared data experience, the SDX layer is a, a extremely important when you're looking at a connected data lifecycle and managing data from collection all the way to insights via AI, ML, or even data warehouse reporting. Um, the important thing to note about CDP is we are secured by design. So we always think about security in mind when we're developing uh, our tooling uh, for a data management platform. So therefore, when you are streaming data or reporting on data, um, you can guarantee that the data is going to be secured. The, uh, pipelines will be secured and that you'll get full end-to-end -end provenance and lineage of that data so, you, so organizations can do impact analysis um, across all the different layers of the connected data lifecycle. Yeah, so the, I think the question from Srikant again is, would I appreciate a note from the team on these differences to help us address our customer when Snowflake comes up? We would appreciate a quick note of battle card. Thank you. All good points. Must appreciate it. Thank you, Srikant. Uh, we'll figure out a way to get you some information. All right. Debbie, back to you. Okay, great. Thank you for um, this wonderful presentation. Hope everyone had found value in today's call.